All right, welcome back to Planet Mondo. I promised myself to start doing daily content. Hold me to it. I'm going to start doing daily content for at least the next 30 days because I slack off on YouTube and I want to hold myself accountable. So if I'm missing content, hit me up on Instagram, planet.mondo. Hey, where the hell is the content, bro? So today, I want to do something that I've never done before, and I want to focus on one director. So I'm going to show you my collection of this director, which today, surprise, surprise, it's Gaspar Noé. I think that's how you say it. Some people say no. I think it's Noé, Gaspar Noé. So Gaspar Noé is one of my favorite current directors. I can't say all-time favorites, um, but current going directors, 100% one of my favorites, top five for sure. Um, and maybe I'll do like a top 10 favorite director sometime. That'll, I think that's a cool idea. But uh, anyway, Gaspar Noé is a French director and he pretty much thrives in doing disturbing movies. Now, disturbing movies in the sense of every single one almost focuses on a different topic and goes deep. Like it goes fucking, you know, knee deep, knee deep in there. Uh, so let's start off. I don't have two of his movies, which I believe one is called Sex and Love, or is it Sex? I think it's called Love. And it's pretty much like a porno, from my understanding. And uh, the other one is I Stand Alone. I'm waiting for that one to get a decent release, so I'm, I'm holding off. I don't want to buy the DVD or like a shitty Blu-ray. So I'm trying to hold off until it gets a proper release here in the States or somewhere in the UK that I can, uh, you know, transport over here. Uh, so... Without any uh, more time wasted, let's get right into it. So I want to start off with my favorite one, Climax. This is my favorite Gaspar Noé movie. This is a classic, Climax. Um, and this is the Arrow video version. Unfortunately, it doesn't have a slip. I wish it got a slip. Arrow, please put this back out, hopefully on 4K. Maybe it'll get one of those thicker cases. It'll get a limited edition. But um, I love this. I mean, it opens up on the inside. It has the reversible cover, which I actually, I think I might flip this cover. Let's flip the cover, huh? Let's flip the cover and see how it looks with the other side. I actually prefer the cover with them all drugged out on the dance floor. Um, so this is my favorite movie of his. And I think this is actually the perfect um, start off point for getting into Gaspar Noé movies. Because this, I don't want to say it's super tame. It's not. There's definitely some traumatizing moments in there there's definitely subject matter that can trigger people um there's a lot in these movies i mean they have a lot of trigger points in these movies like i feel like every single one should come with a trigger warning because that's that's it's necessary i feel like at this point so uh climax is a good one to get your feet wet with that sounds dirty but it's it's not it's not um it's about a group of dancers in france that basically are practicing one night in the middle of nowhere on top of a mountain and it's snowing and one of these participants one of these dancers decides to put some lsd in the fruit punch and it all goes to hell like literal hell and what i appreciate about gaspar noe is he paints you a visual that mimics hell but in reality it's not goblins and demons and ghouls it's real people it's something that could happen to me or to you i should say you and i it sounds better but whatever gaspar noe climax arrow video cop this one up it doesn't come with the slip anymore but it is a beautiful release got some decent features on there and it looks amazing probably my favorite um dance sequence in any movie because i'm not really like into dancing but how the movie starts out it's it's really like cinematic and artsy and cool just the visuals are amazing um let's get into the next one another arrow video this is lux eterno by the way i'm not going into order of you know creation or order of my favorites this is just solely just random i'm just going random uh let's see if i can get this out by the way you can get these protectors i think this is the malco protectors really decent covers your uh movies let's take the slip off i believe the inside looks exactly the same I don't know if we can flip it. We can flip it. Let's flip this one too. So the cover on the inside is a little bit different than the slip cover. So I'm gonna flip this actually. This movie is my least favorite Gaspar Noé movie. And I'll tell you what, it's, it's less than an hour. It's less than an hour. It's a short film I would consider. It's not considered a short film. 
I think it should be because it's an hour. And it basically focuses on showing the backstage drama and all the antics that go on on the set of a movie. Um, all the actors and actresses basically go batshit crazy and hell breaks loose once again in the form of humanity and things that could actually happen in reality. So this one also available from Arrow Video. I don't know if it comes with the slip anymore, but this honestly, I can't really recommend. I grabbed it because like I'm a completionist. Like I just, I need the complete collection when it comes to Gaspar Noe movies, but I, I really didn't like this movie. This is the one movie I did not like by him. And it's because it's kind of boring. Like I expected more. I expect the climax, no pun intended on the last movie, to be what I expect from Gaspar Noe. And that's literally all hell breaking loose. Every single movie, all hell breaks loose. Whether it has to do with drugs, whether it has to do with, you know, like domestic violence and situations like that, his subject matter is definitely triggering and every single movie focuses on a different subject matter. Uh, this one, I think they could have gone a little bit more left with it. It, it was tame compared to his other movies. Um, now I want to get into his latest movie which was brought to you by Utopia, which is a Vinegar Syndrome partner label, which stars Dario Argento, and I think his wife. I'm pretty sure it's his wife. So the movie opens up pretty cool. It's like a side loader. Take the movie out. I actually haven't seen this uh, movie as far as uh, this version. I've seen it at the theater. It got um, a short release, a limited release here uh, by me in Philadelphia at one of these artsy fartsy movie theaters where uh, it's all vegan and avocado toast and hipsters and mullets and uh, fanny packs. That's the type of theater that they played this in. Uh, I want to go ahead and flip this over. So this is the original cover that I was used to um, when they first put the teaser out. And this is the cover that it comes in in the box set or not box set, a slip case, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and flip this around. This movie also focuses on all hell breaking loose in reality. Once again, that is the theme. Also comes with a quick, quick tiniest little booklet, but I mean, booklet nonetheless. It's literally, I think, four pages. <laughs> like, it's, it's nothing. I don't even know why they included this. It's kind of pointless. Um, it focuses on dementia, which kind of hit me hard because my grandmother actually used to live with me and she's suffering from dementia currently till this day. And she has a pretty severe case of it. Um, the movie hit home for me because a lot of the, the, the horrific things that you see in here that terrorize the mind is things that I witnessed in reality and lived with in reality. So this movie, definitely a little biased for me. I love this movie, but I can understand why most people probably I don't want to say most people. I would say this is this is one of those movies. It's, it's again none of his movies for for everyone, but this is not a typical Gaspar Noe movie. There's no like violence. There's nothing that's gruesome in there really. It's all about the mind and the sadness of of the life cycle and what could potentially happen to each and every single one of us and how it impacts our surroundings, the people that we love how people treat you differently, um, and just, just the life cycle, the end of a life cycle, that's what it focuses on. And it's pretty scary, it's it's pretty terrifying. I stand by the fact that I've said, every single one of his movies is disturbing for a different reason. And, and this was a nice approach, this was very different. I appreciated um, the way he went about it. Now his probably grossest movie that uh, triggers a lot of people for the right reasons, um, a lot of domestic abuse and violence and nonsense in there. I have, I have two copies of this. I'll start out with the one that came in uh, from Altered Innocence. Once again, another Vinegar Syndrome partner label. Uh, Irreversible. Irreversible. Now, this movie, the original way it was released was that the movie played out in reverse. And this version and the other version that I actually have... Uh, both have the sequences going in order now. So it's like a different cut of the movie where it plays regular versus how it was previously where it played in reverse. I should probably cover the nip. Um, but yeah, Irreversible, it's, it's a revenge movie about a girl that basically gets raped in the subway and um, her and her loved ones are taking revenge. It's a gruesome movie. And that scene drags 
it drags. The cinematography is amazing in all of his movies. The color palettes, you see a theme of color palettes in his movies. You see a lot of um, association with, of, of dread with the color red and green. Like you see it in Climax a lot. You see it in Irreversible. Um, you see it in a lot of his movies. The neon colors in Lux Eterna, you know, the neon colors in the next movie that I'm going to get into. So he definitely plays with themes and he associates them with certain color palettes. And I really like that. I mean, he does it in his movie covers. I mean, every single movie cover goes along with what the movie looks like. This, this deep red, this is the theme of the movie. I mean, I, I absolutely love it. Again, another version of this, this was released by Indicator out in the UK. So this is the limited edition box set. Comes with a nice booklet. Uh, comes with a poster. Don't know why I'm showing you the poster because it looks exactly the same as the other one. Uh, as the cover, I should say. This is like a before and after shot, I guess. Pretty cool. Um, matte finish on the poster. Nothing too crazy, uh, but it's a great release though. It's a great release, has some great features. This came out, I believe about a year and a half ago. Um, so the irreversible that the Altered Innocence, I think it was. Yeah, Altered Innocence put out, that just came out this previous month and it sold out. So uh, I think it sold out with a slip. I think the regular version is still available. Don't quote me on that, but once again, irreversible, not for anyone. One of the toughest movies to watch. Um, it's one of those movies you, I haven't watched it more than once. Um, I don't feel the need to, but I couldn't help but to buy two copies of it because I'm a collector and certain directors, I respect their work so much that I want to own pretty much every version of the movie that they put out. So oh, last one, uh, one of my favorites, Enter the Void. I originally had this um, regular, just Blu-ray. And what I do with, I guess, I guess directors and movies that I think should get a better treatment as far as the Blu-ray release or 4K or whatever it, the case may be, uh, I buy these extra Criterion cases. Um, again, I don't buy it from Criterion. I get it from like a wholesale place. So it comes out about like a dollar a piece. Um, but I had stocked up on these clear cases and I would take these movies that I felt like need better releases and I would put them in these clear cases because in my mind, it upped the game up and made it look like a higher quality release. I don't know, it, it, there's just something about it. Even some of my kinos, um, I put them in clear cases because I feel like it makes them look better. I, it's just one of those things that just mentally helps me uh, cope with the fact that this didn't have a better release, but now it does, so. Enter the Void, and this movie, um, I have another copy of it, which is the Arrow release, the limited edition. Love this. Look at these colors. Woo! Holy mother of God. Whoa. Feel like, you feel like you're on the acid trip with this. Um, once again, comes with a cool poster. Uh, I don't know if it's reversal. I think it is reversal. Yes, it is. So the poster, um, nothing too crazy. Would not want to be staring at this poster while uh, on any kind of hallucinogenics because uh, if you're hallucinating, you don't want to be staring at these things. Little booklet. I'm trying to go through this, make sure I don't show anything that YouTube will kick me off for. So, uh, long booklet. The movie itself. The inside. Oh, there's some postcards in here. And it comes with, uh, I believe this is a Blu-ray, right? Yeah, it never got a 4K. So Blu-ray only. I, I honestly wish Arrow would have just put this out on 4K. Because uh, this is one of those movies that I feel like would really, really benefit off of 4K. Because of the colors, because of the dark blacks. It just, it would look phenomenal on 4K. But what is the movie about? It's about a dude in, uh, I believe, in Hong Kong, I want to say. And he's tripping balls the whole movie. And it's about... The struggle with drugs and what it does to you and him pretty much hallucinating the whole time uh, and just his day to day life and struggles in a foreign country on drugs as I think he's a drug dealer himself, actually. So uh, pretty wild movie. Definitely gets disturbing for different reasons. I don't want to spoil too much. I feel like this is another movie that people should check out. But I would start out with Climax, honestly, because I feel like that's the tamest movie um, and Vortex also. But Vortex is very depressing. 
in a way that I feel like some people might fall asleep. So this is my stack of Gaspar Noé movies. Gaspar Noé, one of the best out there. Check his movies out. His cinematography is top notch. Themes, not for everyone. But I feel like if you're a cinema lover, it's one of those directors that you should actually seek out and familiarize yourself with. You know, even if it's not your taste, I think he's earned his respects in the game to do. He deserves his movies to be checked out. Probably. So with that said, thank you for joining me. Planet Mondo once again. Hit that like button, please. I know no one's going to share. I understand sharing is annoying. No one wants to share these videos on their social media. Totally get that. The least you can do is hit the like button and hit the subscribe button and the bell notifications because, yo, I told you, I'm, I'm putting shit up every single day. Putting up stuff every day, let's say until July 4th. That's what we're shooting for. More than a month. Almost two months. Let's, let's do it. We're going to put up stuff until July 4th. Not sure how long uh, each video will be, but we'll figure it out, and I'm here to stay. And I hope you're here to stay, so hit that subscribe button. Until next time, Planet Mondo checking out.